Hey, welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leaning towards the singularity. I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Grace. Welcome to High 45. I have a beer. We're in a storm, kind of. Yes. This Ew. is spooky vision. Spooky internet. God, you stole that. Right there, that's all the stuff. Okay, we'll make it spooky internet. So yeah, hopefully the sound won't be that you know, that bad. Or if it's ghosts. Or a palm leaf falling on us. We have palm trees <laughs> in our backyard. We do. It's pretty Very cool. Tropical. Cool, this week, um, I've got... Spooky vision, high body pump. <laughs> I've got, again, a Wall Street <laughs> Journal article on the web's new gold mine, your secrets. Nice. I have got a TED talk about how they found hundreds of potential Earth-like planets. Ooh. Dude, DNA fucking factories. Damn it, I swore. I'm sorry. Fuck. That could f***ing, 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 Anyway. Um, I've got my last story. <laughs> is uh, IBM scientists create the most comprehensive map of the brain's network. It's cool. pretty, it, pretty awesome. I've got a big PowerPoint slide everything. And what's our singularity? Our singularity topic is a discussion oh. about the apparent three big schools of the singularity. The different thoughts. Three major singularity schools. Nice. It's pretty cool to listen. If you're not too sure about the different uh, views on the singularity, tune I in and... I don't um, really know the different views. I know different views. Figure anyway, the one. Yeah. Yeah. Talk as it gets to it, but it's good. Shall I do this one? Yeah. Cool. It's a Wall Street Journal article. And you know, once it's hit the Wall Street Journal, it's kind of, you know, mainstream. It's all dead and over. Um, <laughs> I heard that no one, like, reads the Wall Street Journal. Well, not the... No, the London Times now. Uh-huh. I'm not sure if they've actually changed to a paid wall model in the... Oh yeah, so that, that's it, it's just yeah. that they blocked everyone out, so it's like, you know, 90%. God damn it. Why do old people run this world? Um, you're, you're an idiot, Ruth Murdoch, anyway. Not related to the story. No, oh. <laughs> uh, this is basically about, it's a, a, a series of investigations they're doing, um, how a lot of the major websites out there at the moment are using cookies and a lot of other sort of, you know, data mining techniques to actually track you across the web. Okay. Which isn't anything amazing, like it's been happening been for a, a long time, but I think they're just actually getting smarter about it now and it's kind of, you know, leaking into the mainstream a bit more. So what are um, they saying? What, what, what happened? Well, uh, well they, they, they start off with this uh, example, this person who, uh, it, it just says she's a 26 year old female in, in Nashville, Tennessee, and she can, they can actually just with Rachel! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, j- just how um, with like a simple piece of code, you just track her over across across the web. You can know so much about her to the point where like she doesn't even know that about her. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm just thinking of Rachel. <laughs> well, the, well, the issue is they don't. There's no names involved. Oh. They just use code. But see, this is something we've been sort of predicting for a long time now. I'm sure other people have as well because that's why they're doing it. Um, the idea of just being able to, tr- to track people across the web and know... Perpetually, yeah. Yeah, and know what their behaviours are, what their browsing behaviours are, what they're interested in. And particularly with the advent of the whole social networking, social media mm-hmm. craze, people are um, you know, freely throwing up so much about themselves online. Well, a great example is, that, just looking at your screen right now, is there's most popular on Facebook and it's just everyone listing their actual names going down. I mean, talking about social networks. Oh, wow, yeah, there's like a friend of mine and... Yeah, everyone just person. actually recommending stuff. Yeah, and this is what we were saying before, like how sites will just restructure themselves based on your social data yeah. and your social behavioural information. Yeah. And this is why people... And it's a very simple... It's a very, very simple concept. Basically, all you do is you have an... an an affiliate network of sites, a whole bunch of sites, you then get them to install a simple little piece of uh, code, which basically anytime someone goes onto that site and installs a cookie, and a cookie is just, it sits in your browser with a code and says, you know, this is you, mm-hmm. and stays there. And then so anytime you go onto any of the other sites that the, in the affiliate network, yeah. they then pull that code and they then link it to a database and they know who you are. So they've got this one like tracking thing just all around. Like the, yeah. So it's a tracking cookie that just a lot of sites have all agreed that this is going to be the cookie that they used to track everyone with, or is it lots well, yeah, of cookies? Well, yeah, it's or? an affiliate. Like, they have to all be in the same network. Right. Uh, they wouldn't share cookies. So is this what the, like, the article's about, that there's this one network that has just expanded, like, No, no, well, there's, there's, there's a lot of people doing it. There's a lot of different companies. I won't name them, but read this article. Um, there's a lot that are actually doing this, gathering all this information, and then reselling it right. to advertisers. Because okay. this information is valuable, and this is where the, like, the idea is perfect, because you can actually create incredibly targeted um, ads because you know exactly what they want. So if the final thing could be, just hypothetically speaking, connecting, say, to a social network like Facebook, I mean, you're already seeing the Facebook widget on there, could you associate with that an actual name? Like, or is it... 
Yeah, you, you could, but they they'd have to actually agree to join one yeah. of the big things. But see, I don't, you, you wouldn't don't want to. The there's, there's no, you don't need the name. Who cares about the name? Okay, yeah. Then it, it doesn't matter. Like they can just hide. Um, actually, by assigning a, a number, like a random, like you know, fifty-digit yeah. number or whatever it is, they can just say they can hold up all the privacy concerns because it's like, well, we don't actually know who you are or where you live. Yeah, good point. Well, they do know where they live, basically, in a city yeah, center. They, yeah. Nashville, but, Tennessee. You know, there's no privacy concerns and they still get all the benefit that they're actually after. You I've don't been need a name. around everywhere. Well, if, see, if, if this is already happening, why not make it like an actual opt in thing? I mean, Facebook isn't really doing it with like taking the like stuff. Why not actually well, say, they? well, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, true. You don't know what's happening behind. <laughs> you have no idea. Like, I'm. I, well, look, you know the cookies that go on the computer, though, don't you? Well, that, that's how actually Facebook likes work out how you're logged oh, in. Oh, serious? Oh. Well, there's no other way to yeah, do it. There, yeah. is, there is no other technology to do that. Yeah, okay. Facebook's okay. doing the exact same thing right now, and they, they do that, like, because when you click like, it has to know that you're logged in. Yeah. Otherwise, who, who's liking yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, good point. So it, it uses it uses cookies as well. Like, I, I, I'm sure someone, probably somewhere on the web, has gone through and worked out what cookies are actually being added every time you click like or every time it loads up. Yeah. And I'm sure they're using that data to track you across the web. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is Zuckerberg. He he has a vision. He knows oh, what's God, happening. Yeah. It's rec. It's recommendation engines. Spooky. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we just lost power. I think we just had a power outage. Um, I'll go. Re I'll I'll reset it. Okay. Do we want to like? We'll, we'll pause here and we'll come back. We'll pause here and come back. <laughs> Spooky vision. Bleep. Okay, and we're back. We uh, had a power outage because apparently we are in Eastern Slovakia at the moment, but mm -hmm. Spooky Vision is returning, so get ready for the lovely wind and everything, and we'll uh, continue going. Spooky um, Vision. So yeah, I think I think what I was going to say about the rest of this is it's just going to be it's just going to pick up more and more. Um, the whole tracking you across the web at the moment it seems like a privacy issue, but again, it's that whole recommendation engine. Like once stuff starts coming out, that will actually give you good data back, good information, yeah. good, like, really highly targeted ads that you'd actually want. I mean, that could be a bad, good or bad thing, but anyway. Yeah, well, I think yeah. it would work. If Facebook actually makes it that this is what you want, if it actually does customize sites in the, in the best way, that Wall Street Journal, they've got their own widget there, if that can actually start to take over there. Yeah. But I am, yeah, it's well, so possible like, Facebook could do it, but another thing could. No, 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 Facebook has, they've obviously got a bigger network. Like, there yeah. must be over a million sites that are using Facebook like now. Oh. More well, than that, uh, yeah. That's an affiliate network. That's the same. Yeah, sort of true. Thing. All the, yeah, okay. They're they're probably already doing the exact same thing. Yeah, it's just they're probably tracking it at the back end, not using it for anything at the moment. Just yeah, sitting true. on it. Well, they don't need it's to sell the data because they can actually use it. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. So yeah, it is. We got? Okay, we got tomorrow. One. Uh, <laughs> we probably should go fast or something. I don't know. Go fast. <laughs> this one's great. This one is a TED talk by Dimitar Sazalov probably pronounced that wrong, but about how they found hundreds of potential Earth-like planets, and it's a TED talk, it's fantastic, and just saying how they did it, and apparently this is the big revelation in it, that our galaxy is not populated by massive gas giants like Jupiter, but actually populated by small rocky planets like us, like Earth. Cool. And that's just amazing, like that is the big revolutionary thing right here, like that's big, that's massive, because all we've ever really detected a lot of is like, you know, Jupiter-sized planets, because they were the easiest to. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, no, actually it's uh, rocky planets, which are the big ones. Well, the method's still basic, isn't it? Oh, very much like, so. All, all it does is that you see a planet go in front of the sun and then they measure the dim, how much yeah, it dims. the dimness. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's oh, still so it's, primitive, it's just the instruments have become... A they're, lot they're measuring the little dots of light in the sky. It's hardly primitive. It's like incredible. Like, it's uh, just a more powerful know. telescope measuring how dim the little dots get. Yeah. Dots. It's just they're so far away at this point, they're like, there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, come This is <laughs> pure science. This is the it most is, it's, it's essence. Awesome. It's awesome. You're but saying it can't do anything about it now. It's really awesome, but like... You build stuff on it. You could just, just statistically think that there should be a lot of Earth-like planets in the galaxy. Yeah, but not when more than like Jupiter ones. A hundred billion But not more than stars. Jupiter stuff. That's the big revolution thing. This is the thing that actually changes your mind, thinking that before we used to think, oh, it's mainly Jupiter-sized planets out there, but that's not the case. The case is that it's mainly rocky planets. Okay. And that's that's crazy. It's like, I, I don't know, that, that just really changed the way that I actually look at all the stars and everything out there. Because instead of thinking that, oh yeah, rocky planets are relatively rare and it's mainly Jupiter-sized ones and stuff, you know, mm. all the gas giants, it's... No, instead it's actually, uh, it's us, it's all our stuff, which is kind of cool. I don't know, I, I really liked it, really worth watching this TED talk, it is fantastic, just, yeah, 
it's just a great way to announce it. As I pretty much spoiled it for you, but <laughs> that's pretty much what you get from it. That's the, uh, the cool. Kepler. Sunday. Yeah, the, the Kepler, the Kepler one. I think I'm not sure. I, I watched it a while back. Can't quote it right here, but yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty oh, yeah. fantastic. Uh, dude, DNA factory plans to open within six months. What's a DNA factory? DNA factory is it's not it's not just completely printing out DNA, but um, what they're doing is they're essentially it's a stocked factory of DNA building blocks. Spooky um, train. Which, <laughs> Which they're going to use to remix the, like, like micro life. So it's essentially it's a factory that you know, there's like, they've got a whole bunch of pre-established sort of DNA building blocks that you can just go buy and you know use in your projects and scientific right. research. Oh, okay, right. And then just put them yeah. all together however you want. Well, it, there's an issue with that because they're um, like you can't put a lot of different blocks together because they won't coexist. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, fair it's enough. It's a bit... But what, they, what they've actually done, the whole blocks... What the blocks are, are predetermined uh, DNA blocks that they know actually work. Like, they serve yeah. a function. They, this does that, this does this. Okay, that's then, ridiculous. Yeah, and they can then join it together. Um, what I was thinking with this is, if this is well, only just six months away, like, I was thinking, man, like, within the next, say, five, ten years... Yeah. Like, uh, we mentioned uh, Shapeways printing, the 3D printing guys last week. Yeah. I can imagine just within the, that time, like within 10 years easily, you'll just be able to like code up your DNA with the, the modularized DNA com uh, programming, which Microsoft is already working on and a lot yeah. of other people are. You then submit it to this site, like an online site. It then puts it through a uh, you know, supercomputer simulation just to work out that, okay, this will live or, you know, do some safety tests. Yeah, just make sure it works, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and safety tests as well. And also... And you then compile just, the code. Essentially, yeah. Like, virtually. And then it prints it out, DNA printer. Yeah. Puts it into a, a, um, a bacterium so it can actually grow. And and, just, yeah, just print it that way. Make then, the factory that way. And then ship it up to you. I love that they're doing it this way. Like, you could actually... I go in further on from this that you extrapolate it further. You actually start picking traits. You start doing it that way. It becomes a yeah. Gattaca type future. This is the nice first step. Yeah. Well, that's what's... the nice Gattaca future, not in the horribleness. But it could be the horribleness. Yeah. Still. Well, that's why there's so many um, projects out there at the moment to collect everyone's genomes as well. Yeah. Oh, just, so you're going to do just that. Just because with that, it, it's Great. such a simple process. It's like, okay... Here's your genome. What particular genetic defects do you have? Or what, what issues do you suffer from? Love of beer. Here's my genome. What issues do I suffer from? Hey, I don't suffer from that one. And the love of beer. <laughs> where's the difference? What code is doing that in yours versus yeah. in mine? And then do that across the entire population. Yeah. You can work out what the entire human genome means. Once you get everyone's actually on there, once you actually make it that, look, whenever you're going for a medical test, we actually yeah, record your genome and put it up on there. And you yeah. make that open, you make everyone able to like, you know, cross reference and stuff. That's where you start getting really cool medical advances. It should be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, last one is I've got this story about IBM scientists mapping in the, the best detail yet, uh, the human brain. IBM scientists create the most comprehensive map of the brain's network. And it's, yeah, it's really cool. A lot of people have been talking about this actually recently. And there's, a, there's this PowerPoint slide that you can download and watch. I, I just did that before. The guy is really, he talks really slowly. So it's, it's, it's difficult to get through, but you know, you, you get a lot from it. And it's just really cool, actually. It, um, they split it into, I think it was, oh, it was, it was over 600 um, different like little bits that you let's see with this picture here. Right. And yeah, and they actually separated the network, actually joined all of the different bits together and said how the different networks within the brain connect because, you know, the neurons are all networked together. Okay. And so what they've actually done is, yeah, shown how the networks actually function together. Right. Which is with, really cool. With 600? Uh, with roughly about 600, I think. Or is it... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact number. It's, it's something yeah. here. No, sorry, 383. So what, what sort of segment of the brain is it though? Like what, how? It's everything. The whole brain. How? We haven't well, mapped it all yet. Yeah, no, well, that's what they've done. I've seen, seen how all of the networks, seen all the different networks within the brain, and they've segmented it into 383. Oh, okay. So, okay, so it's probably like different, like, you know, this is the neural... Uh, yeah, well, they've the got the temporal lobe, the whole, cortex. Yeah, uh, occipital lobe, the bas, ba, basal ganglia, you know, all of the other ones. 